We have Trevor Leonard. Trevor, how are you this afternoon? I'm doing awesome. How are you, Ken? I'm doing well. You know, I'm really glad to get you on, and uh, it doesn't matter how you got here. We're glad to have you on. And tell us about the big plans for Frontier City here in Oklahoma City. Well, we're pretty excited. Uh, we spent the last couple months uh, detailing our plans and working with Mayor Holt's office and also the city and county health departments and following the guidance of the CDC and the governor to be able to announce that next Friday, June 5th, we will be opening Frontier City up to first our season pass holders and our membership folks. And then um, starting the Monday after that, uh, we'll open it up to the whole entire public. What will you be doing to make sure that uh, your your patrons are going to be safe? Yeah, we're, we're doing a lot. In this day and age, it feels like you need to do a lot. And we feel really strongly, not just for the safety of our guests, but also the safety of our team members. Um, we're going to be practicing the social distancing. And one of the ways that we're going to do that is by controlling the volume of the folks that are in the park. So starting off on uh, Friday the 5th and 6th and 7th, we will start off very light in the park, less than 25% of normal capacity. We'll so slowly start to work up. The way we'll control that is via an online reservation system. Our guests will be able to go to sixflags.com slash reservations, uh, choose a day, and choose an entry time because uh, we want to try to make it as seamless as possible for the guests as they come into the park. Uh, we're going to be using some really cool technology from Unified Command. They have a thermal, thermal imaging system that folks will just be able to pass right by it. They want it to stop. We want it to take temperatures, but it'll show us any anomalies of any guests that potentially might have a fever. And then once they get in the park, we're going to ask that all guests wear masks. All of our team members will wear masks. So again, following the, the guidance of the CDC and then also the uh, the health departments and and you know honestly the whole entire amusement park industry as a standard uh, we feel that the masks are are most appropriate in this case and our team members wore the mask too of course uh, for their protection too uh, as you go throughout the park you're going to know social distancing markers on the ground so uh, when you're in queue lines for rides they'll show you where you stand you know, we're all familiar with that. We yes. see them all at the grocery stores and at banks right now, so it's, it's not a new thing to us. Uh, the rides will be every other ride seat. Uh, you'll be able to ride with family members, but there'll be a gap on the roller coaster, let's say. Every other row will have riders in it. We'll be cleaning continuously. It's a never-ending process of cleaning throughout the park. All the touch points, cleaning and disinfecting, uh, food service tables in between uses, uh, continuously cleaning in all the bathrooms, uh, hand line cue rails, uh, frequently cleaning all of the rides and, and disinfecting all the rides and all the ride restraints. Um, we're doing away with any buffet style food service and uh, we're moving as much as we can to contactless sales through a new mobile dining app. So there's another bit of technology we've been able to pick up while yeah. we've been on break. And then, um, you know, I, I think I think you'll feel like you're back in the park and enjoying things, but you'll also feel secure and, and safe while you're in the park. Well, that's uh, very important. Um, your staff, was it uh, uh, difficult to assemble a new staff? Uh, you know, some people might not necessarily want to, uh, you know, be involved in something like this now that we it's a whole a whole new deck of cards <laughs> it is it is and it's a whole new training program too it's it's not a uh, it's it's nothing that we've ever done before so we pivoted pretty quick on that but let's talk about the staff uh, we were about 48 hours from opening when uh, we made the decision as a company across the entire nation and some of it was guided by um, governors and, and local municipalities but uh, here in Oklahoma, we closed down just about 48 hours from our opening weekend in the middle of March. And so we had, um, you know, we usually when we open in March, we have about 75% of the staff that we need that gets us through to the summer. And then we continue to hire as we get into May. Um, we have been very fortunate. We have over 90% of the folks that was on staff 
have actually come back to us. And the folks that didn't come back to us, they haven't said because it was any concerns. It's because they they found other work while they were away from us. And, and more power to them. Our hope is, is that at some point in time they'll come back to us. Um, but we haven't anybody come to us and say, no, I'm not comfortable. We don't want to do this. Uh, as they've been through our new training program. And so even if you've been through just the general park orientation and then the the trainings that teach you how to do your specific job, we still ask that they come back and do additional training for this new COVID-19 reality. And even after passing through that reality of those training programs, we haven't had any team members come back and say that, that they're not comfortable, that they don't want to work for us. Um, you know, one of the nice things about our industry anyways is that there's so many different jobs that folks can fulfill, and we believe so much in our team members that we'll find them work. We'll, we'll find them something. If somebody says they're uncomfortable, we'll find them something to do that they are comfortable doing. And so you're still hiring then? We are. We're, so we're still hiring for Frontier City. We're, we're nearly to our target number. Uh, we are starting to ramp up very heavily at the water park. And you know, one of the exciting things about the water park, which we've all known for such a long time, is Whitewater Bay. We're changing the name to Hurricane Harbor, which is very much a, a brand Six Flags name that our water parks are known for across the country. Um, that we plan on opening you know, sometime here in the future. We haven't announced a date yet, but it is coming up. And so we are starting to ramp up our hiring process and our training process for all of our lifeguards for that facility. Wonderful. So uh, you, I, I would imagine that you're expecting to have quite a few folks getting online and getting signed up to come out to Frontier City. So I'll be honest with you, we uh, we got slammed. <laughs> they, uh, we had a lot of people try to go online to the reservation system when we made the announcement on um, on when was it Tuesday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we got completely overwhelmed, which is a great sign. And and it was kind of neat to get some of the emails from some of the folks that we know um, that visit us frequently and say, hey, I can't get a reservation. Is this a good sign or a bad sign? And and it's actually a really good <laughs> sign that we have uh, we have a really high pent up demand of folks that want to come out to the park. The reservation system's working. It's it's um, not allowing folks above the volume that we feel comfortable with right now. Um, so it. It is working. I know folks that really wanted to be able to come out for that first weekend and, and aren't going to be able to. But don't worry, as as we get better and better and as we feel more comfortable, and that's really what it comes down to, to it's our comfortability that we're providing the safest product that we can provide in the right environment, living up to all the expectations that the CDC and the mayor's office has put out. Um, as we feel more comfortable each day that we're able to provide more space for additional guests. We will add on to the reservation system and allow more people in. Um, but everybody will still have an opportunity, and and we've got we've got just a wonderful summer ahead of us to look forward to, in a really cool outdoor environment for us. Yeah, I know you guys have uh, been uh, steadily improving the property uh, every week out there, <laughs> and it's looking good. Uh, do you have a uh, curious? Do you have like a magic number on? What you think will, uh, you know, capacity within the confines of the rules will be uh, out there at the park? Well, we don't know yet. Yeah. Um, we, we've got some target numbers, but um, but I can tell you that we're starting we're starting very light in the beginning, about 500 folks a day, which is very light for this size park. But we want to make sure that we're doing things right, and once we get a better feel for that, we'll work our way up in small increments. So that we know for certain, safety-wise, we're doing the right stuff along the way. So, you know, I can't give you a target yet because I've got one in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> but who that's, knows? Yeah, you know, we, we, it, we might be lucky and exceed that target number. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's really just going to be a matter of time. And, and every day as it goes by and we get better at what we do and we understand better the way our guests um, feel while they're in the park, we'll, we'll be able to to figure that number out. Voice you're hearing is Trevor Leonard, the Frontier City General Manager, joining us here on the Rusty Mike Show. And uh, Trevor, thanks for taking time out for our little radio show here in Oklahoma City. Absolutely. Glad to do it.
You bet. Have a good day, sir. Hey, you too.